Hello students and welcome to week two. You will find all papers needed for week two in your red folder that you were given on our first day of in-person class. You will need to locate the paper titled Nutrition Assessment, which will be our note sheet for this video lecture. Please be sure to write down all important information on the screen and feel free to pause if needed at any time. Our lesson today will be covering State Standard 18 for the course Nutrition Science and Diet Therapy. It states to compare and contrast the types of data collected, the insights they give into the nutritional status of a client, and the limitations of that data for the following four types of nutritional assessments used by a registered dietitian or other trained healthcare professional. This includes historical information, anthropomorphic or anthropometric data, physical examination, and laboratory tests. Our lesson objectives for the, de for the day are to identify the four parts of a nutritional assessment performed by a registered dietitian, be able to define anthropometric measurements and how they are taken properly, to know what are some common biochemical tests that dietitians use to perform an accurate assessment, and know who all the participants are during a nutritional assessment. Good nutrition is essential for the attainment and maintenance of good health. Nutritional assessments are completed by a registered dietitian, and these nutritional assessments help determine if a person is at risk for various health ailments. There are four parts to a nutritional assessment. The first one is anthropometric measurements, a clinical examination, biochemical test, and a dietary social history. When a registered dietitian first meets with a client, they will first want to take some measurements. These measurements are known as anthropometric measurements. These can include taking the height of an individual, weighing the individual, for children, this can include a measurement of the head circumference, also measuring the circumference of the upper arm, and maybe even calculating the skin fold using a caliber to determine the percentage of adipose tissue and muscle tissue that is present in the body. The next important step in the nutritional assessment is a clinical examination. This is usually done by a licensed physician. Signs of nutrient deficiencies are noted if they are visible. However, some deficiencies are not as noticeable as others. After the physical examination, doctors can order certain biochemical tests to assess further the nutritional status of the patient. They can order blood, urine, and stool tests. They can order tests to check on the protein status of an individual, as well as if they are getting enough iron. They can also test to see if a patient's kidneys are working properly. Other biochemical tests include creatine excretion. This can help estimate body muscle mass and, and creatine can indicate and used for evaluating renal function. Other bio, biochemical tests can include checking for hemoglobin to indicate if a patient has anemia 
They can check for red blood cells and white blood cells. They can also do a lipid profile, which is very important for our heart patients. And they can also do a urinalysis to detect protein and sugar in the urine. The dietary slash social history is usually taken when the registered dietitian sits down with the patient one-on-one. -on -one. During this time, the registered dietitian will evaluate the food habits of the patient by having a in-depth discussion with them. They will ask the patient to recall all of the foods that they have had within the past 24 hours. They will also ask for the patient to show them the food diary that they should have been keeping for the past three to four days. It is imperative for the dietitian to remember that you are an advocate for your patient. So you're going to want to be very sensitive to the information that they are telling you because it usually is very personal. During that time, you're also going to want to determine if a client has the financial resources to food, has the financial resources to buy food, to store food, and to cook food properly. It is extremely important for the dietitian to establish a snapshot of what this person faces with food on a daily basis. When the steps of nutritional assessments are evaluated together in the context of medical conditions, dietitians has the best opportunity of making an accurate nutritional assessment. These assessments think then can be used by the entire healthcare team. And by using the nutritional assessments, you can then use it to plan your dietary treatment and dietary counseling.